Yo, what is going on guys? Judy Mikko here and today we're back with some more Crimson Dusk and Dawn. Now it's been a second since we played this game. I think the last time I uploaded this game was about two weeks ago, so I'm sorry for the delay on that. And I promise you that a Katoe Shoujo video is coming out probably in the next uh, day or two after this video comes out. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right on back into the story. Load, I guess we are here. Let's see, what did I miss through? Although Lizzie cut and recut his hand a dozen different ways, he didn't discern any real affection when he spoke the other woman's name. Ah, yes. So, I forget what we're talking about here. Francesca Kelsey. Ah, yes, it was the politic on TV. The politic. The politician on TV that was uh, speaking out against Koi Tech, I believe. And we were feeling a little bit concerned that he may have affection towards her, as that is how our mind goes. I know, but the feeling has me feeling so stressed. I understand. Let's just get some sleep, okay? Too late, Lizzie realized that she had worked herself, worked against herself. Though she felt anxious and twitchy now, if he had initiated again, she would have happily welcomed it. Sex would have let her take her mind off everything else for a time. But now, he would just worry that she was only doing it for his sake. And as much as he tried to convince him otherwise, it might trouble him, and that always made things less enjoyable. Accepting the way things had gone, Lizzie smiled warmly at him and pulled them both toward the bedroom. Please hold me until I fall asleep. As they lay together, Lizzie curled up against his side. She began to feel calm again. Being, being near him always generated a deep warmth within her, and just lying in his arms like this was, per was peaceful bliss. Maybe John had been right not to have sex that night. Her love for him was depthless, but she wasn't as perfect as he deserved. Sometimes her mind wouldn't cooperate, or her past got in the way. What she needed most now was to lie here with him. Together. For her, it was just another glorious element of their life together. And as John stroked her hair affectionately, she reminded herself that he was happy just to be like this as well. Smiling, Lizzie drifted to sleep. The warehouse stretched forever in every direction, sterile white walls yawning toward eternity. In the center of it, they were, po they were impossibly tiny, yet they were everything. Her memory of the scene played out again, Miss Smith having both of them trapped, trying to lure them against each other. In real life, she had fought back. John had helped her, and trusted her even at her worst, and they had escaped. But this time, instead of using an injection to cause him pain, Miss Smith began removing her clothes. She cast Lizzie a mocking smile and then slid into John's lap, pressing herself against his chest. He struggled, but he was bound too tightly to do anything as... Lizzie tore out of the dream and found herself bolt upright in bed. She had snagged her knife from its place and held it in front of her, gleaming in the moonlight. It took her a moment to come back to herself, to realize that it had been a dream. John was lying beside her, coming awake as he realized how upset she was. There was no fear in his eyes, but she could see the deep concern there. Lizzie, are you alright? I'm fine, John. Just a bad dream. She gave him a beaming smile and set the knife aside casually, but her acting wasn't good enough. There were still those lines of concern on his face. It was wonderful that he had come to know her better and better, but that meant she couldn't keep herself from being a burden to him. It can be hard to shake those off. Come here and rest, Lizzie. Though she wanted to pretend that everything was alright, she couldn't resist his soothing voice. Lizzie curled up next to him again, resting her head on his chest. It did feel wonderful, pushing aside the remnants of the dream, but this wasn't how it was supposed to be. She was supposed to protect him. John was the one who was so sad, who, need to, who needed to be protected from the world. He carried so much weight, she couldn't add anything to it. Lizzie bit her lip and squeezed him tighter wishing she could be perfect. I'm sorry, John. Don't say that. I'm glad that I can be here for you. You always are. Come here and try to relax. She snuggled against him, much of her anxiety fading. But what if one day he wasn't there? What if someone took him from her? She would bathe, to the, wor she would bathe the world in blood, and it would do no good because he would be gone, and she would have nothing. 
Lizzie slowly managed to let go of other thoughts and just enjoy his presence, but it took her a very long time to go to sleep. The lecture rolled onward, flowing around the edges of Lizzie's mind. She was absorbing some of the information, but her thoughts were mostly elsewhere. On the page in front of her, increasingly, she'd taken a back corner seat so that it would be so that it would look like she was dutifully taking notes, but in fact she was pouring out her thoughts onto the pages of her spiral notebook. Lizzie paused a moment, looking over what she had re written recently. It was chaotic, but a familiar chaos. She'd written his name many times, frequently surrounded by hearts. In several places, she'd drawn, a, she'd drawn a little picture of herself killing Miss Smith. It was playful, though, and writing out her emotions made her feel a little more stable. Thinking of him always made her smile, but Lizzie also stopped to consider John as analytically as she could. Her mind ran over the roll of images she held of his face, all the smallest changes in his eyes. He was doing better than usual, she realized, though his smile was sometimes melancholy. It felt appropriate for him, as she didn't see any other signs of depression. There were no shadows in his eyes, and he had been very affectionate last night. That thought made Lizzie squirm a little in her seat, molten lava dripping from her mind all through her body and pooling deep inside her core. She let herself dwell on that shared moment for a long time. Pulling herself out of her thoughts, Lizzie set aside the notebook and returned to her real notes. She didn't need to take many, quickly jotting down the key points to catch up to the speaker. Once she was done, her mind began to wander again. It seemed that the event planning had gone through. Their local campus activist groups had petitioned the right places, so now Francesca Kelsey was going to be speaking in town. That was a good thing, theoretically. It would disturb Koitek and it would make John happy. Liz Lizzie had read some of her articles to try and vet her, and Francesca seemed intelligent. Her visit would probably give nice things to talk about. She was married, too, and had been for six years. Everything was fine. So, Lily didn't object to, so Lizzie didn't object to them getting a little involved in helping to set up the event. Everything was fine. Lizzie absentmindedly realized that she was gripping her pen tightly and stabbing it repeatedly into the side of her notebook, leaving it covered in gouges. After class, Lily headed out and started to walk her usual path before she remembered that things had changed. Frowning slightly, she changed her route to head of the administration building instead, where she would be meeting with John. Others would be there as well. The exact purpose of the event was unclear to her. At a minimum, they would, have, they would gather and receive information about the various activities that they would be doing in preparation for the visit and speech. Presumably, after, they would go to do said activities and she could be alone with him. Except that he had expressed interest, which was reasonable. Perhaps they would participate. He had noticed her anxiousness, however, and not committed to anything beforehand. That was very considerate of him, but made Lizzie vow to do a better job of supporting him. As she entered the building, she saw a crowd of people had gathered. It appeared to be an ordinary enough college group, likely not a concern, though it was more difficult to evaluate threats in crowds such as this. She searched through the random people in the way. She searched through the random people in the way, but was unable to find John. Realizing that she was going to be engaged, Lizzie refocused on Aaron, who was coming to greet her. <laughs> oh god, there's two of them now. Aaron, and two women, young, attractive women their age, wearing clothes that were stylish and extremely suggestive, not physical threats, but potentially. Lizzie gave them all a brittle smile. Hey Lizzie, good to see you here. Hello! We're just getting organized, but there are a ton of things we need to do. We already printed a bunch of flyers to put up, but we actually got space on one of those big boards, so we need some people to help design a poster, and we all s Where's John? Mm hmm Over in the corner. We were going to organize after the... Thank you! Lizzie left them, though she watched Aaron and the others for a moment longer. Aaron seemed to have noticed she wasn't completely happy, which was a problem. Being herself around John had made her sloppy, though Aaron also might be more perceptive than average. She headed through the crowd, searching for John. Part of her knew that the people here were probably decent, given their interest. No. Too many of them were just looking for socialization or cause that made them feel good about themselves. There were too many of them to judge, and some could possibly be threats. All right. Oh no. Investigate everyone in the room, ignore others and find John, defend John, ask Aaron for more information. Oh shit, <laughs> defend John with knives. 
Interrogate Aaron for more information. Jesus. Oh my god. So, investigate everyone into the room to eliminate everyone in the room. Ignore others and find John. Ignore targets and find John. Defend John to defend John with knives. Ask Aaron for information to interrogate him. Retreat and monitor the situation. To retreat, gather weapons and monitor the situation. Uh, yeah. So I think that right now we're kind of having a crossover between this kind of yandere side to us and also this other side that's kind of trying to play the normal girl, right? Which is why we're viewing pretty much all of these other girls as, you know, seductive and suggestive and threats kind of thing. So that's not actually what they are, but that's just how we're visually perceiving them. Uh, yikes, let's save just in case we make the wrong choice here and blood starts to be splattered. Let's just ignore others and find John. Let's just get to John. The many options presented themselves to her, Lizzie decided to take the simplest. Best to be prepared, but not to do anything that might disturb John. That left her feeling a little more confident in herself, but Lizzie still searched for his voice in the crowd and focused on him. There he was. Lizzie restrained herself as she simply skipped up to him, taking his arm like any normal girlfriend would do. Her fingers dug into his arm, harder than she had intended, as he gave her a look with a hint of concern. Hello, Lizzie. Sorry I'm late. She beamed at John to reassure him that everything was alright, then also beamed at the people nearby. Not likely any threats, but she beamed hard at them anyway. I actually just finished organizing all the different tasks. Aaron is better at drawing people together than organizing the details, you know? <laughs> That's so true! Yeah, so I think we're just visualizing all the girls as her. Some girl laughed unnecessarily loud at his observation, prompting Lizzie's full attention to zero in on her. Slight pupil dilation. No visible flushing. Heart rate slightly above average. Was that flirting? Was she trying to steal him away from her? But we haven't, had an, but we haven't assigned any tasks yet. What do you think, Lizzie? Do you want to help, or do we have too much to do at home? It was an obvious lifeline to her if she was too stressed, and Lizzie loved him for it. Of course she could trust John. He would always be true to her. Aw, you have to go? We need all the help we can get. Lizzie's gaze turned away from John, too deliberately, a ruse, and toward Lizzie. She gave a smile that touched the corner of her eyes, indicating that it was authentic, but though Lizzie automatically mirrored it, she felt only a cold hollowness. I was actually hoping, hoping that you could help us put up flyers. I've seen you around campus, and you're super fast. What game did she have in mind with such flattery? Lizzie failed to see the advantage the girl had gained, but she disliked the situation all the same. Still, there were a wide variety of different tasks available, and not all of them would leave John vulnerable. She had delayed too long in answering, leaving an uncomfortable pause. It had been a very long time since her social skills had failed her like that. Worse, it was causing him stress, which was unacceptable. Lizzie pretended to be looking over the organizational sheet to buy herself a little time. It's up to you, Lizzie, but I noticed that we need a couple of people to move cabinets and desks out of the supply room we're going to use. You think we could do that? Lizzie smiled as she realized that he was offering her a chance. Though John was always considerate, when he was feeling less depressed, he was especially attentive to her concerns. The idea of participating wasn't unpleasant, but it would be much calmer and more wonderful alone at home. Lizzie looked up, smiled, and made her decision. Alright, we'll save again. Let's see, don't participate, let him participate, but keep him safe. Take care of it for him, participate, participate together, or take John's idea. Um... So... I guess don't participate... It's just both of us saying, yeah, no, we have stuff to do at home. Let him participate, but keep him safe is probably going to be like, oh, yeah, well, we're probably going to stalk him as he does whatever he needs to do. Take care of it for him is likely going to be the op, excuse me, the opposite where we do everything for him. And he kind of sits back, participate together, pretty obvious, or take his idea and we go and move cabinets around together. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe we participate together. 
Uh, yeah, I guess we participate together. But if we take John's idea, then that would end up in us participating together anyways. Alright, let's, uh, let's participate together. Let's see what that does. Ah, okay, so that's just both of us in general participating. Yeah, sure, let's do that. Putting up flyers sounds fun. Let's go together. Good. We have a rough plan for getting them through campus, but also all over town. John began going over the plan, which was simple enough. She could probably have done all the flyers herself, but if she got to walk around with him, then it would be worth it. The problem was that so many other people were involved. People John delegated to other locations. Suspicious girls with questions. At one point, they even needed to drive in someone else's car. There was too many people to, too close for her. She had hoped it would be just the two of them. But as they worked, John was often smiling. The whole social environment, working together with people toward the same cause, seemed to make him happy. That was good. And he saved his brightest smiles for her, never getting too close to any of the other girls. It was fine. The event left Lizzie a little nervous, but she judged that acceptable. If she could drain stress from him into herself, that was the way it should be. When they got home, John seemed lighter than usual. She found herself smiling in response to his happiness and snuggled against him as they fell asleep after the long day, his hand stroking her hair. Alrighty. When her schedule went unusually well, Lizzie found herself actually somewhat troubled. She had no reading for classes, the shopping had gone quickly, and nothing had slowed her down. That meant that she had a surprisingly surprising amount of extra time. On the one night, John needed to work late at the library. For a little while, she busied herself tidying up the house and cleaning her knives, but she found herself anxious. It was no serious premonition, just an uncomfortable feeling. She was glad to have him in her mind, and she was sure that she would soon find his song again, but she also wanted him in the flesh. She spent a while writing in her notebook, many of its pages now heavy with ink, mostly plans for worst case scenarios, if something happened during Francesca's visit and she needed to protect John. But that couldn't hold her attention for long. This was a bad night to be home alone. After chewing on one knuckle for a while, Lizzie decided that she should just go visit John at the library. She padded across the campus, noting how different it was at night. The normal dorms were still bright and would become progressively louder as the students started the party. A few were ambling further, likely drunk or stoned. They'd been invited a time or two, but for the most part she and John didn't have connections to those crowds. Being together and off campus, even just slightly off campus, set them apart from the other students. Normally, Lizzie never gave them gave the subject a second thought. Now, she found herself resenting their happiness, all of them wasting their time so carelessly while he was working, alone and probably depressed. If she had if she urged him to take fewer shifts, he would. Lizzie knew that. But as much as she wanted more of him, she didn't want to unfairly force him to do that. If John thought the extra work was necessary, then he was probably right. Still, Lizzie's eyes briefly flickered to a couple sprawling over one another in the grass, neither a threat. They were pulling at their clothes, though, and well past the point of just making out. Before they finished college, she wanted a moment like that, not doing something like that in public, but simply being together by the trees, enjoying themselves. College should be a happier time of happy memories, light years between the drama of their meeting and the difficulties of adulthood. She wanted something she could remember forever, maybe capturing a picture. Picture. Yet right now, everything was so complicated. Lizzie frowned and looked away, increasing her pace. It wasn't fair. The library itself was basically deserted, since few were doing research on a Friday night. That was why John ended up with a long shift, and why he took it, getting to pay to do his own work. Lizzie found herself shifting to walk silently instead of giving any sign of her presence. This could be a good opportunity to observe him without him being aware. It had been the first time that she had come to love him, and though the way, and though the other ways since coming to know him were better, watching still held a special place in her heart. She peered around a bookshelf and finally spotted him. John sat behind the desk, reading from one of his books. He was making decent progress, brow furrowed in that concentrated look that she so loved. But occasionally, his focus seemed to waver. She noticed his eyes grow a little distant, and he had to backtrack on the page. Sometimes when he did it, he would look at a sheet of paper beside him for a while, occasionally making a note. Were they just his notes? But she knew John's note-taking habits extremely well, and that, wasn't how she, and that wasn't how he usually operated. It was as if he was trying to read, but simultaneously distracted by thoughts of something else. What could it possibly be? 
Her mind imagined that it was some kind of love letter, but she discarded that possibility as quickly as she could. No, John wouldn't do that. If he wrote a love letter, it would be to her. He looked so sad, though. Lizzie stared as if her gaze could strip away his skull and reveal every thought inside. If she just understood him perfectly, she could prevent him from being sad. There would be no anxiety then, only perfect trust for one another. Lizzie retreated further in the library, just in case he looked up in her direction, and watched him from a vantage point even he wouldn't notice. He did glance up a few times, almost as if he felt her watching, but she was too well hidden. It was wonderful that he could almost sense her, but Lily, Lizzie needed to watch him for now. Eventually, he would understand. Hours passed in a flash, and suddenly John was standing and yawning. After so long of his stillness, it was almost startling. Apparently, his shift was almost over, which meant he would need to lock up. Deciding that she had watched enough, Lizzie sneaked through the back stacks and approached from the near entrance from near the entrance again, beaming. John smiled the instant he saw her. Oh, Lizzie, I hope you weren't lonely. I just wanted to come greet you once your shift was over. <laughs> You're a sight for sore eyes after this dead shift. Just give me a moment to lock up. It didn't take him long, and then they were walking across campus to head back home her arm through his and her head leaning against his shoulder. They passed the couple, now lying still on top of one another. John seemed a little surprised, but just shook his head. Lizzie inclined her head toward them, then looked back at him and raised her eyebrows. Sorry, I can barely keep my eyes open. That's okay. I know you've studied hard. Let me help you rest. When they got home, she quickly took his bag from him to put it away before he could go through the trouble. If she acted quickly enough, he wouldn't need to use any more energy to make decisions, and could just relax. Eventually, he fell asleep with his head on her lap, finally looking truly at peace. As he stroked his hair and stared down at him, watching. Let's see. Life proceeded normally enough. A significant part of campus was busy preparing for the arrival. But there were even more people who didn't know or didn't care. But it mattered to John, so it mattered to Lizzie. Lizzie had invited, had joined him in spending time with the preparations, and it had seemed to go well. She was glad to see John invested in something like this. But when she came home from class one day, she realized that she might have gotten it entirely wrong. John slumped on the couch, too unfocused to notice her. There was an emptiness in his eyes that she hadn't seen in some time, immediately making her heart hammer in her chest. John, are you okay? Is something wrong? I'm just a little tired. There's not a problem or anything. Of course it's a problem if you're not feeling okay. I... You don't have to pretend to smile for me, John. It's okay to be sad sometimes. Thank you, Lizzie. It's nothing specific. I'm just... having a bad day. Then stay right there and don't worry about anything. She skipped closer and gave him a quick hug and a kiss, but didn't try to press. Instead, she moved on into the kitchen, getting something simmering. When John was depressed, he didn't want to eat. She had learned that trying to force it could turn bad, but the smell would slowly get through to him. While doing her work, Lizzie headed into their bathroom and counted his depression medication. It didn't seem like he had forgotten or that he had taken more than usual, which was good. But though his medication helped, it couldn't make his life perfect. There had been a time when she had desperately hoped that she could do that. She still wanted, she still wished that she could, but she knew that his sadness didn't mean that he didn't love her. All she could do was be supportive. When she came back out, he had slumped back further, but she saw a bit more relaxation in his posture. Suddenly, her heart ached with love for him so intense that she had to support herself from the doorframe. She didn't deserve him. He was always so supportive, so kind even when it cost him. It was easy to just bask in his presence, to see him as a shining paragon. But her John was human, had limited resources, and she had missed the signs that she sometimes did. One of Lizzie's fingers slid up to her mouth and she started to bite down on it, but she pulled back. John wouldn't want to do that. Instead, she moved into the room, determined to give back this time. She checked on the soup, then went to sit beside him, just touching his side a little being present without demanding anything of him. John smiled at her but didn't say anything. 
It was a quiet smile that faded into sadness, but she loved it too. These incidents always magnified her love for him. She didn't love his depression, but when he was like this, he seemed to truly he seemed so truly real that she couldn't take her eyes off him. Lizzie, Lizzie restrained herself and just sat supportively. After a time, though, he sh she shifted. Later on, maybe they could eat, but until then... Do you need to talk about anything? I'll be okay. I think I just overexerted myself preparing for Kelsey's visit. Oh, I haven't been pushing you too much, have I? I liked when we worked together before, so... No, I didn't mean that. There's just so much to do. But you don't have to do it all, remember? Don't push too hard. <laughs> You're right. Thanks, Lizzie. Lizzie thought that the conversation had gone well, but she was plagued by doubt. She hadn't noticed this depression incoming, hadn't been able to prevent it. She began going over every interaction in, min in minute detail, wondering where she had neglected something. Lizzie realized that she needed to get out of her head. If she kept herself thinking that way, she would end up spending the evening developing elaborate plans to kill someone or kidnap John to safety. She needed to do something, but what? Be quietly supportive or talk about issues. Huh. Very interesting. Mm. Talk about issues. I'm kind of tempted to talk about issues because, I mean, uh, I don't know. Like, sure, being quietly supportive might be good, but at the same time, it might be able to try better to try and talk this out. We'll, we'll go for that. We'll try and see what happens. Lizzie wanted to be supportive. But she knew she couldn't help him if she let herself grow unstable. So she hesitantly began to talk, letting him know about her insecurities. Though John didn't have much energy to, energy to spare, he did his best to listen. But as things went on, Lizzie began to tell that he was growing more depressed. She wished she decided differently, but it was too late. She stopped talking after a while and just held each other on the couch, drifting closer to sleep as exhaustion claimed them. As she fell asleep, Lizzie settled on another thought. This visit might be a good thing, but she would be very glad when it was over. Yikes, I guess we uh, kind of brought the mood down a little bit more than uh, than I meant to. I think we're going to end it off there, so... I think we're going to stick with that choice. Just because I don't think in the long run it's going to have that much of an impact. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> I maybe should have thought about that. I, You know, it's it does seem now pretty obvious that, hey, maybe it's not a good idea to talk about, you know, your own issues to somebody who's very clearly, you know, not feeling their greatest. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, honestly, though, it is pretty interesting. And I don't know if they have this picture on there yet, but this is basically the scene that she was describing here. Yeah, I mean, it would kind of make sense with this huge visit coming up that he would probably be getting a little bit depressed just because that's a lot of stress to kind of be the main one organizing everything um, so yeah I think after this it's, after this visit it's probably going to be a much better thing and hopefully he'll start feeling a little bit better and we won't kill a bunch of people <laughs> but uh yeah that's gonna be it for me for this time i hope you guys enjoyed if you did make sure to leave a like on the video and tell me in the comment section below what you would like to see me play next if you enjoyed this video or any other videos on my channel videos or series on my channel then i highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you'll be notified when a new one of those videos comes out anyways it anyways <laughs> that's it for me and i'll see you in the next one